I heard in Bahamas you have your own lobster. That's the famous Bahamian lobster right there. What makes it a Bahamian lobster? The Bahamas, one of the Caribbean's most fascinating food countries. Are we almost there? Right over here. Right over here. The Bahamas is an archipelago consisting of 700 different islands, each with their own culinary identity. Yes! He's got like three of them! In this series, we'll be visiting three. <laughs> From the super modern Paradise Island, where they bring you food. And right here now, we're gonna have the tamale. Just like the bohemian bowl. Can you eat this raw? To the more sparse Andros Island. Do they smell something? Where you may need to chase down your own food. Oh, shit! Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Holy shit! With plenty of beachfront property, this place is well known for its seafood, including this. This is a Bahamian lobster. It's coming out here in just a second. And today, I'm on a mission to find one that's over 10 pounds and take it to some experienced chefs. Oh my gosh, this is wild, it's huge. If you're on the Bahamas' main island, New Providence, and if you're looking for seafood, you might want to come here. This is Montague Fish Market. I'm the original island boy. We the original island boys. Sir, put her there. I can't believe it, I'm in the Bahamas. Oh, and we did a cool handshake. <laughs> Meet Alan Brown, a veteran fisherman who founded this fish market in the 1970s. I can see fishermen go out. As they come back, they bring their catch here. What kind of food can we expect to see here? Whatever is common in the Bahamas. We have yellow eye snapper, dog snapper, strawberry grouper, the hog snapper, the gray snapper. So they're all different. I thought they're just different sizes of the same fish. <laughs> I heard in Bahamas you have your own lobster. That's the famous Bahamian lobster right there. To me, it looks like a spiny lobster. What makes it a Bahamian lobster? Because it grows naturally in the Bahamas and it's plentiful here. Part of a family of over 45 species of spiny lobster, Bahamian lobsters are found in rock crevices and coral reefs in the Bahamas. They're an important contributor to the economy here, with the sale of more than 6 million pounds each year. This is amazing. It's so huge. One lobster weighing about 8 to 9 pounds. For the video, can we say it's 11 to 12? <laughs> and when I pay, can we say it's 5 to 6? I'm curious, you founded this market, you were a seller here, but now you're doing something a bit different. Yes. Your job is to come here, find the best seafood possible, and then bring it to the resort. The best, the freshest. I want to talk about tourism. When did Bahamas start becoming more of this hub for tourism? Tourism was always our number one market. The Bahamas first recognized the potential of a tourism industry way back in the middle of the 19th century. Now, it's one of the richest countries in the Americas. But with one caveat, it's largely dependent on tourism. In fact, tourism makes up over 50% of the national GDP. We went up to about 9 million tourists a year at one point. As long as we have the tourism coming, business is good. More people are employed, more people are fishing. This country's infrastructure is geared towards providing products, services, and accommodations to tourists. From cruise ship stops to some of the most luxurious resort experiences you'll find anywhere. Welcome to Atlantis. In the Bahamas, over 50% of the GDP comes from tourism, and Atlantis is at the middle of a lot of that. With over 6,000 staff and 46 restaurants, I am here to get the full tourist experience in one of the Caribbean's biggest tourist hotspots. Let's go. It's breakfast time, and look what I've got here. Lobster quesadilla, what? We're at Sip Sip, a restaurant located inside the sprawling Atlantis Paradise Island. Here, they offer a Bahamian menu, but with a twist, like this. Bahamian lobster is boiled in hot water with carrots, onions, and celery, then left to rest in an ice bath. Unlike Canadian or Maine lobsters that boast two big meaty claws, this spiny lobster only has meat in its body and tail. Sear the succulent meat on a flat top before giving it the chop. Now for the bill. Fully cheese up a tortilla, add the chopped lobster, even more cheese, and close it up. Hit it on the flat top until the cheese melts and drizzle with chipotle cremer. Cheesy, lobstery, I'm gonna try it out. Oh. 
lobster, big chunks. It's so fresh. What could be better than eating a quesadilla by the beach and wearing this outfit? There's no better trifecta. Oh, look at that. We got a little mountain of salsa on top. This is the best, the kind of fruity salsa. It's got mango in there and a little bit of pineapple. Oh my gosh, it's so satisfying because there's so much cheese, which for me would be enough, but there's just big juicy chunks of fresh cut lobster. Give me a second. Cleanse my palate here. Usually in this show, I wouldn't come to a place like this and I wouldn't usually get the tourist experience, but this is different. There are about 400,000 Bahamians who populate the Bahamas, yet every year they welcome 8 million plus tourists, mostly coming from North America. A quesadilla isn't necessarily Bahamian, probably not at all, but that's what's interesting. See, the American palate influences some types of food here, or at least some of the food options. So they've taken something Americans love, a quesadilla, and then they've Bahamianized it a little bit. They put some seafood, some mango salsa, and they've created their own twist. So my goal today is to meet some Bahamian chefs to learn more about the real Bahamian food and figure out where that line is between satisfying the tourists and the locals that come here and maintaining the Bahamian culinary identity. This was a nice breakfast, but we have a lot more food to come. Long shot, but I got the reach. Pop lock, now I'm off the leash. Today's experience revolves around the Bahamian lobster. We'll see how different chefs turn this magnificent sea creature into jaw-dropping creations. First up, Maxine, head chef of Frankie Don Bananas. Maxine's been part of the Atlantis team for 15 years, helping to bring the real taste of local food to curious visitors through her cooking. Maxine? Yes, Sonny. Let's build this lobster plate. Let's go, Sonny. Let's build this lobster plate. All right, step one, get the lobster, right? OK. The lobster we saw at the fish market has made its way to here. It's huge. It's massive. It's one of the biggest spiny lobsters I've ever seen. Step one, split the lobster in half. An incredibly difficult task, considering the size of this lobster. Alas, she makes it through its thick shell, revealing a load of juicy tail meat. That gets thoroughly rubbed down with a citrusy marination blend. Then it's tossed on the grill until it turns four shades of orange. This is a common preparation method in the Bahamas. Although it's not every day, they're doing it with a 10-pound lobster. It's been grilled, and then now it's coming out here in just a second. Okay, here it is. Oh my gosh. This is wild, it's huge. Even the legs. <laughs> what happened? Was this lobster on a diet or something? Now, the assembly. She serves it up with side dishes. First, roasted plantains with a touch of cinnamon and honey. Oh, that's so sweet and delicious. Next, deep fried sweet potatoes. And finally, a salad. This is one of the biggest, most huge lobsters I've ever seen in my life. It is spiky, it is spiny, it's very dangerous, except for right now. Although it could still hurt you. I mean, you could pick this up and use this as a weapon. If someone was trying to attack you, give me your wallet. Oh yeah, take this to your face. And then they just shoot you and you would still die, but put up a good fight. That's what it'd say in the obituary. Oh, I'm gonna go from the head and work my way down. It is super soft coming out of here. Oh my gosh. Just huge, irresponsibly large chunks of lobster. Try it out. like too much of a good thing. Wow, that is powerful. The residual tamale is still in here. It's combined with the meat. It's made it very rich. Tamale, it's the gland that helps with digestion, sort of like a liver and a pancreas combined. In the Bahamas, this part does not go to waste. People think the guts. They're picturing actual intestines, but if you're eating the lobster guts, it's basically just that big, creamy, fatty, golden tissue that melts down into just a very rich, buttery, creamy kind of a sauce that you can mix with the meat, and it just makes it more delicious, more savory, and it's a shame that so many people, especially in the USA, just toss that and throw it away completely. My friends, it's time to dig out this tail. Lobster can be a pain sometimes, so you have to prepare it in such a way that you're not gonna have the shell sticking to everything. Yes. This is half the tail right here. It's so big and so tender. You can just pick it off with your hands. You can break it up. I've never seen lobster tail like this. Try it out. Mm. The texture is really remarkable because sometimes when you get big lobsters like this, it can get kind of tough. Chewy, sinewy, that's not what's going on here at all. It's a perfect texture. Mm -hmm. Sweet, a little smoky, and absolutely delicious.
our next chef has a knack for utilizing local Bahamian ingredients and techniques in a way that feels familiar to foreign visitors. Elrod has a strong culinary background and five years experience working as head chef at Fish, a fine dining restaurant offering truly innovative meals. Chef? Good morning. Put her there. How you doing? Mr. Elrod, it's a pleasure to be here with you today on the beach. What do you think of this hat? It's cool. Yeah. It's unique. You're an island, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a good liar? No, I mean it. All right, of course. thank you. Today we're on the beach because you're going to make something special. Yes, sir. Tell me what it is. We're going to make a unique version of a tamale. Tamale. It's a traditional Mesoamerican dish. I tried it during my recent trip in Mexico City. Mm. A corn-based food steamed in a corn leaf or banana leaf. It's usually filled with meat and sauce. Today, we're stuffing it with lobster. Sorry to be so violent towards him. Yeah, it doesn't mind. Oh, is it alive? It yeah. doesn't mind. <laughs> I just saw it move. Whoops. And right here now, we're going to have the tamale. Ah. That's the lobster fat, which is mostly just the liver. What's interesting is that in the USA, and they were just taking all that out. Yeah. They're just cooking like the claws and the tail and just completely disregarding this part that a lot of other cultures understand is tasty. It's good. It's really good. The reason why the FDA says that the tamale has toxin is so it's not safe for the people to eat. But here in the islands and local other cultures, we eat the tamale. It varies some more, keeps the meat more juicy. Yeah. And it intensifies the flavor in the meat. What we'll be looking forward to do. Good. FDA. Cigarettes, no problem. <laughs> tamale, can't do it. Smart, right? <laughs> How is this going to be incorporated into the dish? So we're going to go start sauteing down some vegetables. I'm going to make some blocks. So once I get that done, I'm going to incorporate some spices just to get it flavor as a paste. I'm going to add our stone ground grit, fold it into our banana leaf, and we're just going to steam and grill some down. I have no idea what's happening. I just want to watch. Yes, sir. Let's do your thing. First, he prepares the filling, sauteing diced tomatoes and onions in olive oil. He infuses it with spices, smoked paprika, garlic powder, ginger powder, cumin, salt, curry powder, and tamale. Add diced lobster. Next, the base. Chef Elrod boils cream and milk, then adds the grits. Once it reaches the desired consistency, add butter and season to taste. Now, the bill. Grill the banana leaf to make it pliable. Apply some oil, the grits, and the filling. Toss that on the grill. And once cooked, top it with mango salsa and prepare your taste buds for a wild ride. Chef, you've outdone yourself. This looks incredible. Thank you. I look pretty cool too. Yes, you do. I think I fit right in. Listen, I love your hat. Trust me. Thank you. You want me to sign it and give it to you? No, no, no. It seems that this is a lobster tamale tamale. Yes, sir, it is. I love edible flowers. I feel like royalty. Let's try this out. Mmm, it's almost like a bit of a curry. It's a variation like a brown masala. Mmm, little pieces of lobster meat. That's outstanding. Is this something that's on the menu? No, it's especially made for you today. You've done excellent work. It's delicious. I mean, there's creamy grits, the tamale on top of that. Sorry, the tamale. Those organs that get all steamed up and mushy. They add a nice bit of richness and creaminess. Would you be able to use the lobster tamale in the restaurant you work in and fish? Yeah. How do Americans take that? I just think it's a unique taste. So most times they don't be as receptive to it. But locals really are more receptive because we understand what's the flavor and the profile mm. it brings to the dish. So we try to also intertwine our food in a way that can be receptive to our tourist guests who comes in the country. So we can give you food that you're used to, but we can also bring a unique behemoth flair and seasoning and flavors into your palate. Do you think that, like the American taste has affected what Bahamians eat in their own time? In a way, yes, because we got more Americanized. How do you keep your culinary identity? We still have our days where we trend to get back to our roots. And that's the most important thing to me, that we stay to our roots. And that's what comes out every day in our dishes. The purpose of today was for me to kind of get a little soft landing and an introduction to this country and the food here. From the next video, I'm going to be getting out of the tourist hotspots altogether. <laughs> oh, this looks like my dad's toenail. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. Coming to Atlantis, especially coming to a, a high-end restaurant, mm -hmm. Excuse me, I always hawked up something once a high end, like a freaking German. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like some German dude. To the guy who thinks I just own 15 blue shirts, you're wrong. I bought a new one. Are you happy? You guys happy? Is this the side of something you wanted to see? I'm like a flamingo now. I'm flamboyant. I think you would still say that these days. Big lobsters like this, they prepared it so well.
a phone call? If you want to know the true facts about him, he's a male. Oh, okay. The male has a bigger head, the female has a bigger body. The tail bar. Hey. Thank you to Atlantis Paradise Island in the Bahamas for making this lobster adventure possible. Also, thank you to all the chefs today for cooking up some outstanding food. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. All right. Got to jump in, in my yacht. Huh? That's where I'm going next is right here to my yacht. Oh, these guys are fixing it up for me.